Okay, so now we're going to, um, we're going to work on getting the Genes for Good file over to DNA.land. The first thing that you need to do is log in or register. These are just throwaway emails, so it doesn't really matter. I was making multiples trying to figure out how to get it to work. So, email... Then you're going to log in. Now, you know, obviously it's going to have a lot of information in terms of consent, uh, consent, blah, 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 blah. Got to check the little box. You agree. Now, we're going to do the select the file up here because we don't have family tree DNA, ancestry, or 23andMe. Okay. This is what you're going to be doing here in a second. But what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to mess with the file a little. Um, so if you remember back when we were doing the genes for good to um, over to gdmatch.com, we had that original file. We are going to go down to the third one on the bottom. So it's actually, I think, number seven in your list. It says... Um, GFG for filter on face genotypes 23andMe you're going to copy this you're going to paste it to your desktop just to show you you know copy paste the desktop so now I have it up here So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually open this folder. In a wonderful world of this, I'm going to pause my video because it makes a couple of minutes for it to open because if it's, you're open a fairly large file. Okay, so now it has opened. Now as you see... I have two different files here. The one on the right is my Genes for Gift file. The one on the left is a 23andMe file. So what we're going to do, if you look at the top, top right here, the headers are different. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, there's a little break down here on our left hand side. It just has a little um, number sign. You're going to copy all of this. You're going to copy. And you're gonna you're actually gonna erase the genes for good header out of here and you're just gonna paste it now once again it's gonna take a couple of moments for that to paste over maybe your computer's different but on my oh, every time I do something like that it'll tell me it's not responding but it'll it will work eventually um, I understand that you're not going to have the second notepad where I do where I've got the, the 23andMe, like a legitimate 23andMe file versus the genes for good file. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to provide this header for you so that you can move it over uh, yourself. Um, obviously, like I said, you're not going to have it, so I'm providing. So... What it's actually going to do by doing this, it's going to, the header is going to be changed into the genes for good file, which is the one over here on the right. And when you move that over, for some reason, it's going to assume that it, that it is. We're still sitting here. Okay, now, so we show the le one on the left-hand side. That's my legitimate 23andMe file. Well, it's not my file, but it's one, it's one of my family members' files. And then on the right-hand side, this was a Genes for Good file. It still technically is. All we've changed the header, so I don't need this anymore. All we're going to need is this now. Just go save it as... Let's say, let's testing, that's what I'm going to save it as because I've already done this. Um, it's going to make the file right here. Select the file. 
Let's testing. Let's testing. Um, you can put your mother's information and your father's information in right here. Um, I just say don't know for this experiment, I guess. <laughs> and then whatever the, your sex is. Um, if you want to see other DNA matches, you're going to have to click that. Um, sharing contact information is uh, they would give you would give them the right to share your email address so they can actually contact you. So you're not only seeing, but you're actually able to contact. And then the last one down here is join the NBCC Breast Cancer Survey. Uh, I'm not going to even make a duplicate and do that. But, you know, you can read more information and decide if that's what you want to do. If you don't have this information, you don't even have to put it. And there you go. That's how you get it over. Now, the only difference is about this, it does take at least 48 hours at, at its best, most likely, but could take longer than that. Um, so, that just gives you a heads up. Just because it's not working, it doesn't mean anything. Now, the one thing that I want to discuss is, you know, you'll have to find your relatives, um, find relatives of relatives. You'll have your ancestry report, which I, I don't think it's that accurate on, on DNA land, DNA dot land. I, I don't think it's that accurate. If you want to look at it or whatever, so be it. Um, then you have the uh, trait prediction report. And I didn't sign up for that, but you can start at a later date if that's what you want to do. And then down here, it's going to make you some more files. Now, I have not messed around with um, these because I just haven't had the time yet. I have worked also with the raw data. I'm trying to get it on the other websites as well. So if I can possibly use this raw data versus the raw data that Genes for Good gives me, then I'll do that. But that's basically what this is. Like I said, it's going to take two or three days for it to even show up. You can keep checking back if you want to, but like I said, it it's going to take a little while. So just to show you what one that I've already done. I'm not a robot. Log in. This is my DNA land. It will show uh, cousins. I think I actually made a duplicate of myself. So that's what that is. It'll have my son. Um, then you start getting in these. These are at some, some of the genes for good. Test. This is where I told you I, I was making duplicates trying to figure out how to make it work. And I had to remember which way I was doing because I, I've actually been working with several different files. and messing with those files trying to figure out what I had to do to get them on here. So that's why there's duplicates even though I know who this is, whose file is this. This is my actually great aunt file. So that's another thing here. Like this right here it says it's three degrees. So it could be first cousin, it does not mean it's first cousin. Just a heads up, it does not mean that. Um, but it gives you an idea. And then um, it will have other people's that I don't know. And speculative matches. And then if we go back, we can go to find relatives of relatives. Because, just because somebody matches you, or let me go back and say that, just because somebody does not match you, does not mean that they're not matches to your family tree, they just genetically do not match with enough information for it to show up on any of these tests. So... You're kind of pushing it a little, but as long as you have a good tree and then perhaps this, you know, this so-and-so person has a good tree, then you may be able to find out where the other ones come from. Like I said, 
the genes for good are the ancestry report. I don't think it's very accurate, but or for the genes for good, shall I say? Um, since genes for good doesn't test all the markers that other tests like uh, 23andMe and Ancestry and FTDNA, they they actually test with a few more markers. So their their results are um, even I don't even know how to say it. They're just they have more markers, therefore they're probably going to be a little bit more um, easier to break down. Um, but this is mine. I'm not going to pull any of that up. I don't even see, like this right here, I don't even have that on my, on my GD match or FTDNA or, or anything. That's why I just, I just don't think that DNA land is very accurate. Generals, generally, yes, but not extremely active or accurate, so I'll say. And then you have the trait prediction, and you can go through and fill these out if you want to. Um, like this right here. This is another thing that's not accurate. It says that I'm likely to have blue eyes, and they're confident. Their confidence is good that I do have blue eyes, but I have green eyes, so it's not 100%, but that's generally how this is, and I'll continue to work with other websites trying to get those, um, to get Genes for Good on those websites, but for now, this is a new thing.